How the Camel Got His Hump by Rudyard Kipling. Just So Stories, read by Marcus Parrish. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work. And besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most excruciatingly idle. And when anybody spoke to him, he said, Hump! Just hump! And no more. Presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel! Come out and trot like the rest of us. Hump, said the camel, and the horse went away and told the man. Presently, the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come fetch and carry like the rest of us. Hump, said the camel, and the dog went away and told the man. Presently, the ox came to him with a yoke on his neck and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Hump, said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three, O oh three, I am very sorry for you, with the world so new and all. But that hump thing in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry, were the world so new and all, and they had a palaver, and an indaba, and a punchayet, and a powwow on the edge of the desert, and the camel came chewing milkweed most excruciatingly idle, and laughed at them. Then he said, Humph! and went away again. Presently, there came along the jinn in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Jinns always travel that way because it's magic. And he stopped to palaver and powwow with the three. Jinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the jinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, and he's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. Whew, said the gin whistling. That's my camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, Humph, said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only hump, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the gin. I'll hump him. The gin rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most excruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the gin. What's this I hear of you doing no work with the world so new and all? Hump said the camel. The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand and began to think a great magic while the camel looked at his own reflection in a pool of water. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning, all on account of your excruciating idleness, said the jinn, and he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Humph, said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often, Bubbles. I want you to work. And the camel said, Humph! again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great, big, lolloping humph. Do you see that? said the djinn. That is your very own hump that you've brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday, when the work began. 
Now you are going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this hump on my back? That's made a purpose, said the djinn. All because you missed those three days, you will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your hump. And don't ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert, go to the three, and behave. Hump yourself. And the camel humped himself, hump and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a hump. We call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world, and he has never yet learned how to behave.